Hey everyone, this is Shanae, your soul shine sister, and we continue to read The Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Waddles. Chapter 7. The Individual Point of View. Important as the matter of your point of view for the facts of social life is, it is of less moment than your viewpoint for your fellow men, for your acquaintances, friends, relatives, your immediate family, and most of all, yourself. You must learn not to look upon the world as a lost and decaying thing, but as a something perfect and glorious, which is going on to a most beautiful completeness. And you must learn to see men and women, not as lost and accursed things, but as perfect beings advancing to become complete. There are no bad or evil people. An engine which is on the rails pulling a heavy train is perfect after its kind and it is good. The power of steam which drives it is good. Let a broken rail throw the engine into the ditch and it does not become bad or evil by being so displaced. It is a perfectly good engine, but off the track. The power of steam that drives it into the ditch and the end re wrecks it is not evil but a perfectly good power. So, that which is misplaced or applied in an incomplete or partial way is not evil. There are no evil people. There are perfectly good people who are off the track. But they do not need condemnation or punishment. They only need to get upon the rails again. That which is undeveloped or incomplete often appears to us as evil because of the way we have trained ourselves to think. The root of a bulb that shall produce a white lily is an unsightly thing. One might look upon it with disgust, but how foolish we should be to condemn the bulb for its appearance when we know the lily is within it. The root is perfect after its kind. It is perfect but it is a perfect but incomplete lily. And so we must look, learn to look upon every man and woman, no matter how unlovely in outward manifestation, they are perfect in their stage of being and they are becoming complete. Behold, it is all very good. Once we come into a comprehension of this fact, and arrive at this point of view, we lose all desire to find fault with people, to judge them, criticize them, or condemn them. We no longer work as those who are saving lost souls, but as those who are among the angels, working out the completion of a glorious heaven. We are born of the Spirit, and we see the kingdom of God. We no longer see men as trees walking, but our vision is complete. We have nothing but good words to say. It is all good. A great and glorious humanity coming to completeness. And in our, and in our association with men, this puts us into an expansive and enlarging attitude of mind. We see them as great beings and we begin to deal with them and their affairs in a great way. But if we fall to the other point of view and see a lost and degenerate race, we shrink into the contracting mind and our dealings with men and their affairs will be in a small and contracted way. Remember to hold steadily to this point of view. If you do, you cannot fail to begin at once to deal with your acquaintances and neighbors and with your own family as a great personality deals with men. This same point of view or viewpoint must be 
the one from which you regard yourself. You must always see yourself as a great advancing soul. Learn to say, there is that in me of which I am made, which knows no imperfection, weakness, or sickness. The world is incomplete, but God, in my own consciousness, is both perfect and complete. Nothing can be wrong, but my own personal attitude and my own personal attitude can be wrong only when I disobey that which is within. I am a perfect manifestation of God so far as I have gone, and I will press on to be complete. I will trust and not be afraid. When you are able to say this, understandingly, you will have lost all fear and you will be far advanced upon the road to the development of a great and powerful personality.